Good day, Ma'am Grace. Good day, classmates. Today, we will tackle about the digestive system. Digestion is important for breaking down food into nutrients which the body uses for energy, growth, and cell repair. Food and drink must be charged into smaller molecules of nutrients. And the organ system that involves in digestion is obviously the digestive system. So, the digestive system is responsible for taking whole foods and turning them into energy and nutrients to allow the body to function, grow, and repair itself. The six primary processes or functions of the digestive system include ingestion of food, secretion of fluids and digestive enzymes, mixing and movement of food wastes through the body, Four, digestion of food into smaller pieces, absorption of nutrients, excretion of wastes. So first, ingestion. The first function of the digestive system is ingestion or the intake of food. The amount is responsible for this function as it is the orifice through which all food enters the body. The mouth and stomach are also responsible for the storage of food as it is waiting to be digested. This storage capacity allows the body to eat only a few times each day and to ingest more food that it can process at one time. So, in simply as explanation, um, when we say ingestion, it is the function where mouth is responsible when, whenever we intake the foods. For example, when we intake the the apple, uh, uh, we call it ingestion. Next, six secret. Next, secretion. In the course of a day, the digestive system secretes around 7 liters of fluids. These fluids include saliva, mucus, cytochloric acid, enzymes, and bile. Saliva moistens dry food and contains salivary, salivary amylase, a digestive enzyme that begins the digest, digestion of carbohydrates. Mucus serves as a protective barrier and lubricant inside of GI tract. And hydrochloric acid helps to digest food chemically and protects the body by killing bacteria present in our food. Enzymes are like tiny biochemical machines that disassemble large macromolecules like proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids into their smaller components. Finally, bile is used to emulsify large masses of lipids into tiny globules for easy digestion. So, in sim simplest explanation, when we say secre secretion, um, nakapanood na po ba kayo ng mga video na kung saan pag inintake na yung food, tas dumaan sa esopagus, tapos yung malalaglag na siya sa stomach, dun sa stomach, parang kalahati nun, eh, uh, hydrochloric acid, saliva, uh, mucus, halo-halo na dun kung saan pag nalaglag yung food, um, natutunaw siya ganun. Uh, third, mixing and movement. The digestive system uses three main processes to move and mix food. First, swallowing. Swallowing is the process of using smooth and skeletal muscles in the mouth, tongue, pharynx to push out of the mouth through the pharynx and into the esophagus. So, so yung swallowing, yung tinatawag nating paglunok sa Filipino term, kung saan ilalagay mo lang yung food or i-intake mo yung food sa bibig mo tapos yun, lulunokin mo na tinatawag na swallowing or kapag kumakain ka ng kanin with ulam ano, yun, kapag kinakagat-kagat mo tapos nil tas nilunok mo, swallowing next, next is peristalsis peristalsis is a muscular wave that travels the length of the GI tract move, moving partially digested, digested food a short distance down the track. It takes many waves of peristalsis for food to travel from the esophagus through the stomach and intestines and reach the end of the GL track. So, yung peristalsis, ito yung tinatawag na pagmimix or movement ng, ng pagmimix ng food simula sa esophagus, dadaan ng stomach, dadaan ng small intestine, large intestine, and the... Uh, Yung anus na ganun, yung pag-movement or the mixing of food. So, in segmentation, ito yung tinatawag na dun sa small intestine, di ba pag nagugutom tayo, eh, nararamdaman natin na 
uh, nagkukurok yung chan natin kasi nga wala nang mapiga. Doon yung doon nagaganap yung segmentation kung saan um, pinipiga nung intestine, ng small intestine natin yung food para ma-mix or ma-move to doon sa large intestine tapos mapupunta na doon sa anus. Uh, so yun nga kapag nagugutom tayo at wala na siyang mapiga, doon yun na doon yun na part kung saan nag move or nagmi-mix yung food. Fourth, digestion. Digestion is the process of turning large pieces of food into its component chemicals. So, we have two types of digestion, the mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Wherein, mechanical digestion is the physical breakdown of large pieces of food into smaller pieces. This mode of digestion begins with the chewing of food by the teeth and is continued through the mus muscular mixing of food by the stomach and intestines. Bile produced by the liver is also used to mecha mechanically break parts into smaller glob globules. Um, While food is being mechanically digested, it is also being chemically digested as larger and more complex molecules are being broken down into smaller molecules that are easier to absorb. And chemical digestion begins in the mouth with salivary amylase in saliva splitting complex carbohydrates into simple carb carbohydrates. The enzymes and acid into stomach continue continue chemical digestion but the bulk of chemical digestion takes place in the small intestine thanks, the, thanks to the action of pancreas. The pancreas secretes an incredibly strong digestive cocktail known as pancreatic juice which is capable of digesting lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. By the time food has left the duodenum, it has been reduced to its chemical building blocks, fatty acids, amino acids, and monosaccharides, and nucleotides. So, the difference between mechanical digestion and mechanical digestion begins in your mouth with chewing, then moves to moves to So, in simplest explanation, kapag nagda-digest tayo, nagsasama rin yung mechanical digestion at saka chemical digestion. Hindi pwedeng iisa lang, pero tinutukoy kasi ng mechanical digestion yung, um, yung pag-i-intake ng food kapag galing sa mouth tapos dire-diretso lang siya dun sa GI tract, yung pat na yun. Samantalang kapag yung sa chemical digestion, includes na dun yung pag yung pag connect ng mga saliva dun sa food na ano kung paano nila ine-effect or naapektuhan yung mga foods tsaka paano ito na break down and absorption once food has been reduced to its building blocks it is ready for the body to absorb absorption begins in the stomach with simple molecules like water and alcohol being absorbed directly into the bloodstream Most absorption takes place in the walls of the small intestine which are de densely folded to maximize the surface area in contact with digested food. Small blood and lymphatic vessels in the intestinal wall pick up the molecules and carry them to the rest of the body. The large intestine is also involved in the absorption of water and vitamins B and K before feces leave the body. So, in absorption, dito din nagaganap yung ano, yung kung saan pag na-breakdown na yung food dito na magsisimulang uh, umaksyon yung mga blood vessels, uh, lymphatic vessels na i-distribute yung mga vitamins at mga foods or molecules dun sa iba't ibang bahagi ng katawan natin lastly, the excretion the final function of the digestive system is the excretion of waste in a process of known as defecation Defecation removes in the indigestible substances from the body so that they do not accumulate inside the gut. The timing of defecation is controlled voluntarily by the conscious part of the brain but must be accomplished on a regular basis to prevent a backup of indigestible materials. So, sa excretion, dito na yung final function kung saan... Um, nilalabas natin or pinupup natin yung mga extra na food na hindi na i-digest yung alam nyo yung alam nyo naman yung stool ganon pwedeng hard stool or watery stool stool uh, wherein ano 
uh, it is voluntary by the conscious of the brain kasi uh, voluntary siya kasi minsan sa ating um, binob... Uh, Kapag sinasabi na voluntary, nakokontrol natin kung saan kapag natatai na tayo, nakokontrol natin siyang pigilan. Hindi katulad dun sa involuntary na bagay katulad ng pag -heart, yung heartbeat, ganun, pagdadigest ng food, uh, yung pagtain natin ay eh, napipigilan natin. So, it is a conscious part of the brain but must be accomplished on a regular basis to prevent the backup of indigestible materials. Next, organization of digestive system. So, organs of the digestive system are divided into two main groups, the gastrointestinal tract or yung tinatawag kong GI tract and accessory structures. GI tract is continuous tube extending through the ventral cavity from the mouth to the anus. It consists of the mouth, oral cavity, or pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. So, yung accessory structures include the teeth, tongue, in oral cavity, salivary, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So, tinatawag siyang GI tract because... Kapag mapapansin nyo yung diagram, simula dun sa mouth, pag pumasok siya sa oral cavity, oropharynx, esophagus, stomach, dare-diretsyo yung, dare yung way or yung path, or tinatawag din na track, dare siya hanggang sa makarating dun sa anus. So, tinatawag naman yung accessory structure na accessory structure kasi nga it include teeth, tang, salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Uh, para sila lang yung nagsosupport or tumutulong dun sa mga organs na nasabi ko kanina na mas, mas malalaking organs para ma-digest or ma-intake ma yung food tapos ma- ma-ilabas natin, ma-excrete natin. So, muscular movement of GL tract, peristalsis na banggit ko nan kanina, wave-like movement that occurs from the oropharynx to the rectum, allowing GL tract, GI tract to push food particles toward the anus. Mixing, mixing motion in the oral cavity and stomach that allows the GI GI tract to repeatedly break down food into smaller par particles using mechanical digestion. Segmentation, the re regions of the smaller intestine contracting and relaxing independently, allowing the small intestine to digestive and absorb more efficient efficiently. Okay, good afternoon, ma'am. Next, we're going to discuss the organs in digestive system. The organs in, of digestive system can be separated into main group, the alimentary canal and the accessory digestive, digestive system. Organs of the alimentary canal, also called as the gastrointestinal tract, also known as the oral cavity, is a continuous hollow muscular tube that winds through the verti vertebral body cavity and is open at both ends. Its organs include the following, like mouth. Okay, mouth and oral cavity. Food is broken down by mechanical digestion using mas mastication. One chemical digestive process occurs when amylase enzymes in saliva breaks down polysaccharides into disaccharides. The tongue, made of skeletal muscle, manipulates the food during ma mastication. It also contains taste buds to detect taste sensation. Food particles are mixed with saliva during mastication, resulting in a moist lump called bolus for an easier passage into or pharynx. In mouth, food enter, enters in the digestive tract through the mouth or oral cavity, a mucous membrane-lined cavity. In mouth, there are several parts, I, parts like lips. Lips wherein it protects the anterior opening. Cheeks, the cheeks from its lateral form. The palate. The palate has two parts, the hard palate and the soft palate. The hard palate forms its anterior roof, and the soft palate forms its posterior roof. The uvula, or yung sumasabit dun sa may lalangunan natin, sa bago lalangunan, it's called uvula. Yung tinatawag natin na uvula, it is a fleshy finger-like finger projection of the soft palate 
which extend inferior from posterior edge, edge of the soft palate. Vestibule. Vestibule is the space between the lips and the cheek external and the teeth and gums internal is the vestibule. Yung, ito yata yung malambot dito sa may ano natin. Bunga nga natin. Next is the tongue. Tongue is the muscu muscular tongue occupies the floor of the mouth and has several body attachment. The high void the hyoid bone and the stalloid process of the skull. Next is the palatine tonsil or yung tabi ng yubula, yung, yung sa may taas natin, yung parang skin na malambot doon, yun yung kinatawag na palatine tonsil. It is ay, palatine tonsils at the end posterior ends of the oral cavity are paired masses at lymphatic tissue and palative tonsil. The lingual tonsil cover the base of the tongue just beyond. And the oral cavity proper is the area contained by the teeth is the, yun yung tinatawag natin na cavity proper. Okay, next is the teeth. Teeth is adapted for mechanical digestion in oral cavity. The function of teeth is to tear and grind the food, breaking it down into smaller fragments. Yun ang function ng teeth. Bago, yung bago natin lunakin yung food is um, um, tutunawin or igagrind niya into small pieces. The deciduous teeth. The first set of teeth is, all, is also called the baby teeth or milk teeth. And they begin to erupt around 6 months and a baby has a small has a full set or that or meron siyang 20 na teeth by the age of 2 years the permanent teeth as the second set of teeth the deeper permanent teeth enlarge and develop the root of the milk teeth are reabsorbed and between the age of 6 to 12 6 to 12 years they loosen and fall out um, the permanent teeth or the secondary teeth are developed and are divided into into four types the incisor in, wherein incisor are adapted for cutting, the canines are for tearing and piercing. The premolars and molars have broad crowns with ground cups and are best suited for grinding. Wherein yung mol premolars is for crushing and molars are for grinding. These teeth follow the human dental formula of 2123. Next, in addition, wala to sa PowerPoint pero idadagdag lang, na lang namin na isang part pa ng alimentary canal na kwan is yung esophagus. Wherein, esophagus or gullet runs from the phonics through diaphragm to the stomach. The size and function of, of esophagus is about 20 cm or 10 inches long ang laki ng esophagus natin and it is essential and passageway that conducts food by persistalis 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 to the stomach the structure of esophagus is the wall of the alimentary canal organs from the esophagus to the large intestine are made up of the sum four basic tissues of layer Next is the mucosa. Mucosa is the innermost layer or a moist membrane that lines the cavity of the organ. It consists primarily, primarily of a surface epithelium plus a small amount of connective tissue and a scanty smooth muscle layer. The sub submucosa is a found just beneath the mucosa. Serosa. Serosa is the outermost layer of the wall that consists of a single layer that layer of a flat serous fluid uh, produced cell the basal, visceral peritoneum. Yung serosa is yung parang yung nagdudugdong dito sa may labi natin at saka dito sa may ano natin gum. Yung parang wire parang wire doon. The alimentary canal wall contains two important intrinsic nerve Plexus. There are two, the submucosal and the mentoric nerve plex plexus. Salivary glands. The salivary glands play an important role in your body and they are located in and around the oral cavity. There are three pairs of salivary glands called parotid, submandibular, and sublingual gland secrete 
most of the saliva in the oral cavity using saliva redox. First, the parotid salivary glands. Parotid salivary glands are located just in front of your ears. They are the largest salivary glands and they produce 25 to 30 percent of the saliva. And they transport it through the parotid duct to the oral cavity. Next, submandibular salivary glands. is located under our tongue. They produce about 60 to 70 percent of saliva and transport it through the submandibular duct. They release it under the front of our tongue. Lastly, the sublingual glands. Sublingual glands are located under our tongue. They produce 3 to 5 percent of saliva and they release it through many ducts under our tongue. Saliva is the body secretes between 1 and 1.5 liters of saliva in a day and it composes of 99.5 percent of water. Other components of saliva include electrolytes, digestive enzymes, metabolic waste, and antibacterial elements. Saliva helps moisten the food during mastication, dissolve the food in forming the bulus, and help cleanse the teeth. Saliva consists of 99.5% of water. The remaining 0.5% is dissolved substances including amylase enzyme for chemically digesting carbohydrate, bicarbonate ion, maintains pH of saliva of 6.5 to 7.5, and many electrolytes. Next, stomach. Stomach, a pouch-like organ primarily designed for food storage for 2 to 4 hours. Some mechanical and chemical digestion also occur. Stomach is located on the left side of the abdominal cavity, nearly hidden by the liver and the diaphragm. Stomach contains two sphincters at both ends to regulate food movement. Cardiac sphincter near the esophagus, and pyloric sphincter near the small intestine. Stomach is divided, it, divided into four regions, cardiac stomach or the cardiac, fundic stomach or funded, body of stomach, and pyloric stomach or pylorus. Stomach contains thick folds called rogue and its layer for providing larger surface area for expansion, secretion, digestion, and some absorption. Parts of the stomach. First, the fundus. The fundus is the expanded part of the stomach lateral to the cardiac region. Next is the body. The body is the mid portion and thus it narrows inferiorly. It becomes the pyloric antrum and then the funnel shaped pylorus. Pylorus. Pylorus is the terminal part of the stomach and it is continuous with the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter or valve. The size of the stomach varies from 15 to 25 cm in length, but its diameter and volume depend on how much food it contains. When it, it, when it is full, it can hold about 4, to liters, 4 liters or 1 gallon of food, but when it is empty, it collapses it inward on itself. Rugae. Rugae, the mucosa of the stomach is thrown into large fold called rugae with, when it is empty. Greater curvature. The convex lateral surface of the stomach is the greater curvature. While the lesser curvature, the concave medial surface is the lesser of curvature. When we say convex, it is the yung likod ng ano ng to gastric secretory cells. Gastric secretion, the stomach is famous for its sec secretion of acid, but acid is only one of four major secretory products of the gastric epithelium, all of which are important either to the digestive process or to control or of gastric function. The four, the four gastric secretions are 
mucus, acid, prothesis, and hormones. The mucus, the most abundant epi epithelial cells are mucus cells, which cover the entire luminal surface and extend down into the glands as mucus neck cells. And the next one is acid. Hydrochloric acid is secreted from parietal cells into the lumen where it establishes an extremely acid acidic environment. And the next one is prothesis. Pepsinogen, an inactive zymogen, is secreted into the gastric juice from both mucous cells and sheath cells. And the last one is the hormones. The principal hormones secreted from the gastric epithelium is gastrin, a peptide that is important in control of acid secretion and gastric motility. Gastric secretory cells, sheath cells secrete pepsinogen, an inactive enzyme. Parietal cells secrete hydrochloric and intrinsic factor which help absorption of vitamin B12 in the intestines. Mucous cells secrete mucus and alkaline substances to help neutralize hydrochloric in the gastric juice. And the last one is the G cells secrete a hormone called gastrin which stimulates the parietal cells and overall gastric secretion. Okay, we proceed to chemical digestion and absor absorption in stomach. Large food molecules, for example, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and starches. Starches, when these molecules in, we intake, when we intake these molecules, the, mo the molecules must be broken down into subunits that are smaller enough to be absorbed by the lining of the alimentary canal. This is accomplished by enzymes through hydrolysis. Carbohydrate, di carbohydrate digestion is continued with gastric amylase resulting in disaccharides. Protein digestion begins with pepsin, activation of pepsinogen by hydrochlor hydrochloric, resulting in, in peptides, small chains of protein. Lipid digestion begins with gastric lipases, which can only break down certain lipids such, a, such as butter fat, resulting in fatty acids. Absorption in the stomach is limited where only small and fat soluble substances can be absorbed, water, alcohol, aspirin, and certain drugs. The result of all these mixings, chemical digestion, secretion, and absorption is yellowish paste called sign, which will be passed on the small intestine. And we proceed to regulation of gastric secretion. Gastric secretion is finally regulated by neural, hormonal and paracrine pathways. During inge ingestion of meal, the pathways can be activated by stimuli originating in the brain of, or stimuli originating in the stomach, such as mechanical stimulation. For, ex for, for example, distension or chemical stimulation, protein, the main, sec the main secretagogues active at the level of the parietal cell are acetylcholine or neurotransmitter gastrin or hormone, and histamine or paracrine agent. Regulation of gastric secretion and activities is by both nervous and hormonal mechanism. Food moving along the oral activity and esophagus stimulates the parasympathetic nerves to activate the secretion in gastric glands. The gastric hormone from G cells in, in turn stimulates the gastric glands for more activities. For example, the positive feedback on the other hand, when food is empathizing from the stomach, sympathetic nerves ex inhibit the gastric glands and gastric, and a hormone called intestinal gastrin, released by small intestine, inhibit other gastric activities. The above regulation occur in three overlapping phase, cephalic phase, gastric phase, and intestinal phase. So now we're going to tackle the three phase, which are the cephalic phase, gastric phase, and intestinal phase. So first, cephalic phase involves special senses, detect food, and user, uses parasympathetic nerves in the vagus nerve to stimulate gastric activities. Na, ang mga napaloob na activities dito ay number one, sight, smell, taste of food, cause stimulation of vagus nuclei in brain. Number two is vagus stimulates acid secretion na kung saan may dalawang uh, major effect ito ay may dalawang nakapaloob dito which is letter A, direct stimulation of parietal cells which is the major effect 
and B, stimulation of gastrin secretion or the lesser effect. Number two is gastric phase. Invo gastric phase involves the distension of stomach and stimulates its own activities by the vagus nerve. Distension of stomachs or the stretch receptors stimulates vagus, vagus nerves through vagus stimulates acid secretion. Amino acids and peptides in, in stomachs lumen stimulates acid secretion or the chemoreceptors. Direct stimulation of parietal cells or the lesser effect stimulation of gastrin secretion through gastrin stimulates acid secretion or the major effect. Gastrin secre secretion inhibited when pH of gastric juice, juice falls. And uh, number three is, is intestinal phase. Intestinal phase involves acidic chime passing into the small intestine which secretes intestinal gastrin hormone to inhibit gastric activities. Neural inhibi inhibition of gastric emptying and uh, acid secretion, arrival of chime and duodenum causes distension and an increase of osmotic pressure. These stimuli activate a neutral reflex that inhibits gastric activity. In response to fat in chyme, duodenum secretes the hormone secretin that inhibits gastric and acid secretion, the, as the enterogastric reflex. This reflex begins in the small intestine or the entero and ends in the stomach or the gastro. Duodenum fills with chyme. Sensory stretch receptors are stimulated. Sensory nerve impulses travel to CNS and nerve impulses from CNS or the vagus inhibit peristalsis in his Okay stomach. guys, next is we will talk about the pancreas. Pancreas is the most pancreatic enzymes are produced as inactive molecules or zymogens so that the risk of the self-digestion within the pancreas is minimized. Next is more than 98% of pancreas mass is devoted to its exocrine function, the secretion of pancreatic juice by the pancreatic axine and their ductile cells. Ductile cells produce sodium bicarbonate which helps neutralize the acidic gastric contents. Next is the acinar cells of the exocrine pancreas produce a variety of digestive enzymes to break down food substances into smaller absorbable molecules. Next is only 2% of pancreas mass is devoted to the eslets of the langer. Okay guys, next is we will talk about the major pancreatic enzymes. The number one is pancreatic amylase. This pancreatic amylase digests polysaccharides into disaccharides. It also helps break down starches into sugar, which your body can use for energy. If you don't have enough amylase, you may get diarrhea from undigest carbohydrates. Next guys is about a uh, next guys is the pancreatic. Okay guys, next is the pancreatic lipases. These pancreatic lipases digest triglycerides into fatty acids. This enzyme works together while bile, which in your liver produce to break down fat into your diet. If you don't have, if you don't have enough lipase, your body will be trouble absorbing the fat into important sol fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Symptoms of poor fat absorption include diarrhea and fatty bowel movements. Next, guys, is the pancreatic nucleases. This pancreatic nucleases digest nucle nucleic acids into nucleotides. Next, next, guys, is the pancreatic proteinases. All secreted in their inactive forms digest peptides into amino acids. Trypsinogen is active by enterokinase secreted by duodenum into trypsin, which, is ter which in turn activates the other enzymes. Chymotrypsinogen becomes chymotrypsin. Proamino peptidase become amino peptidase and uh, procarbocypeptidase become carbopeptidase. These enzymes also breaks down proteins into your diet. It also helps protect you from germs that may live in your intestines like certain bacteria and yeast. Undigest proteins can cause allergic reaction into some people. Next guys is the pancreatic secretion. Number one is the parasympathetic nervous system increases para pancreatic secretion. Number two, two duodenal hormones also influence pancreatic secretion, secretin, and cholecystokinin. Number three is 
food entering the small intestine stimulates the secretion of both hormones. Number four, secretin stimulates the secretion of pancreatic electrolyte rich fluid while CCK enhances the enzymatic secretion of the pancreas. Next guys is the regulation of pancreatic juice. Number one, acidic chimes enters duodenum. Number two, secretin is released into bloodstream form intestinal mucosa. Number three, secretin stimulates pancreas. Number four, pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. Number five, pancreatic juice, high end bicarbonate ions, neutralizes as a acidic chime. Functions of liver, important in carbohydrate metabolism, where hepatic cells conduct glycogenesis, converting glucose into glycogen, and glycogenolysis, breaking glycogen down to glucose. Also is critical in lipid metabolism, where hepatic cells produce bile for fat emuls emulsification, oxidized fatty acids, Synthesize various forms of lipids and convert glucose to fat, fatty, fatty acids or lipogenesis. Other functions of liver include storage of gly glycogen, iron, and vitamins A, B, and B12, and contain glyco gly glycosides or destroy damage, erythroxide, and foreign substance using phyco phycocytosis detoxifies harmful substances in the blood and serve as a blood reservoir contains 7% of blood volume. And next, gallbladder, a small sac located on the superior visceral surface of the liver, stores and concentrates bile secreted by the liver. Regulation of bile release. 1. Chime with fat enters small intestine. 2. Cells of intestinal mucosa secrete the hormone cholecystokinin or CCK into the blood stream. 3. CCK stimulates muscular layer of gallbladder wall to contract. 4. Bile passes down the cystic duct and common bile duct to the duodenum. And 5. Hepat Hepatopancreatic sphincter relaxes and bile enters the duodenum. So let us now proceed to the small intestine. The small intestine is the section of your digestive tract where the majority of the digestion and nutrients absorbed takes place. So based from the first reporters, uh, digestion is started from the mouth. Pag ginuya mo yung food intake mo, it, it's um, considered as digestion, pero hindi doon nagtatapos yung digestion ng mga food intake natin. So, ano ba yung anatomy and structure of small intestine? Small intestine falls a uh, twisty path. Kumbaga, uh, pa-curve curve siya ng ganun. Curve, 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 curve. And it is a and it is framed with large intestine. Uh, nasa, at nasa surrounded siya ng large intestine natin. It has a uh, Height of 20 feet and it is divided into three sections. The three section is the didenum or it is located beyond the stomach. Majority of the chemical breakdown nutrients takes place and it is the shortest among the three sections. The second is the jejunum. Second is the jejunum, or it is located in the middle section of the small intestine. When the chemical nutrients break down into small unit, it absorbed to the wall jejunum and drop into the bloodstream and carry out to the cell of the body. Pag na pag na digest majority kasi ng digestion natin ay na nag-nag-occur sa duodenum sa duodenum natin pagkatapos niyan pumupunta pumupunta sa duodenum natin at yung mga nutrients na galing sa mga food intake natin ay kinikerry niya to the bloodstream at doon and, and at dinidistribute nito sa mga cell, cell ng body natin. And the last section is the ilium or terminal or the terminal section of the small intestine. So the secretion of small intestine. Intestinal gland secretes a watery fluid that lacks digestive enzymes but provides a vehicle for moving Chime to be light. Intestinal enzymes includes mastest digest, 
maltose into glucose, sucose digest, sucose into glucose and fructose. Lactase digest, sucose into glu glucose and glucose. Peptidase digest peptides into amino acid. Lipase digest triglyceride into fatty acid and glycerol. Nucleases digest nucleotides into nitrogenous bases. And Enterokinates converts tricinogen into tri tripsin. Digestive enzymes embedded in the surface of microvilli slip molecules of sugars, proteins, and fat. Regulation of small intestine secretion. Secretion is stimulated by gastric juice, chyme, and reflex stimulated by the distension of the small intestinal wall. So, large intestine. Large intestine, it is tied to the ileus. ileus. Large intestine is tied to ileocecal junction to pectinate line of the anal canal and measures 6 feet in height. If the food passes through the three section of the small intestine, the digestion is... If the food passes to the three section of the small intestine, digestion is complete and some absor absorption has occurred. The remaining food remedy is ready to pass through the ileocecal valve and it prevents from flowing back into the small intestine. Yung ileo ileocecal valve ay yun yung parang boundary ng small intestine tsaka large intestine. Kung saan pre-prevent niyang uh, mag-flow back sa small intestine yung mga food remedy na hindi na pwedeng i-digest ng small intestine. The parts of uh, large intestine is cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid, sigmoid colon, rectum, anal canal, and anus. Yung cecum natin, eh, dun mo na nai-stack nai dun yung yung mga hindi na pwedeng i-digest na galing sa mga finood intake natin. Tapos yung ascending colon is nakalocate siya sa um, left side ng ating body, dito sa left side. Tapos yung transverse colon naman, eh dito sa taas, yung pa ganyan, pahiga siya. Tapos yung descending colon, eh yung pababa dito sa uh, left, ay baliktad. The part of large intestine is first the cecum, the beginning of large intestine. Dito muna na i-store yung mga um, yung mga hindi na pwedeng i-digest na, na, na food intake natin na galing sa small intestine. The second is um, ascending colon na nakalocate siya dito sa right side ng right side na small na large intestine natin. Tapos sunod yung transverse colon or dito sa taas yung pahiga na ganyan. Tapos yung descending colon is dun na sa left side. Tapos yung side mount colon ay eh, yung papunta na yung, uh, yung papunta sa anus na natin. Tapos sa large intestine, wala nang digestion or little digestion na lang yung nangyayari doon. Since pag dumaan sa 3 section ng small intestine yung mga finood intake natin, ay eh, digestion is already complete. And now, let's talk about the major hormones of digestive tract. First one, gastrin. Gastrin or gastric and intestinal, released by gastric cells in response to the presence of food, causes gastric glands to increase their secretory activity. Gastrin, which localizes gastric antrum, that bottom part of our stomach. Gastrin stimulates secretion of gastric acid and intrinsic factor from parietal cells. And also, it stimulates secretion of pepsinogen from chief cells. Next one is somatostatin or gastric inhib inhibitory peptides, GIP. Inhibits secretion of acid from parietal cells. Somatostatin came from the pancreas small intestine and stomach and it's come from the D-cell. Release somatostatin. Somatostatin is the primary and hip tour of the action of every hormone. 
Cholecystokinin is the small intestine released from eye cells. It contains three major functions. First one, it stimulates gallbladder contraction, stimulates release of pancre pancreatic enzymes, and also relaxes sphincter of OD for release of bile and enzymes. Next is secretin. Secretin, which come from the S cells, also in the in in the small intestine, it's a stimulate of bicarbonate from pancreas. Next one, the major digestive system. Major digestive system, I, digestive enzyme. First one is salivary enzymes. Salivary enzymes begins carbohydrates digestions from breaking down starch and glycogen to these carides. Saliva contains special enzymes that help digest the starches in your food. And that is and and that is amylase enzyme. Amylase enzyme is a special type of carbohydrates which break down starch of big carbonates into small molecules. Saliva is the watery liquid produced by glands located under the tongue. Is an essential component of the digestive process. Next one. Gastric enzyme. Gastric enzyme, pepsin from gastric glands begins protein digestion. Lipase from gastric glands begins fat digestion. Gastric enzyme, pepsin is the main gastric enzyme. Pepsin is a stomach enzyme that serves to digest proteins found in ingested food. Pancreatic enzyme. Pancreatic enzyme, the pancreas contains exocrine glands that produce enzymes, impo produce enzymes important to digestion. These enzymes include trypsin and chymotrypsin. Chymotrypsin to digest proteins, amylase for the digestion of carbohydrates and lipase to break down. Proteolytic enzyme, also called as peptidases, proteases or protein nases. Proteolytic enzymes are most commonly known for their role in digestions of dietary protein. They perform many other critical jobs as well. For example, they are essential for cell division, blood clothing, immune function, and protein recycling among other vital processes. And last one, intestinal enzymes. Peptide Peptidase breaks protein compounds down into amino acid by leaving the pepti peptide bonds within proteins by hydrolysis. This means that water is used to break the bonds of protein structures. Common diseases of the digestive system. First, gastroesophageal reflux disease. If you have heartburn or acid reflux more than a couple of times a week, you may have gastroesophageal reflux disease or what we call GERD. The esophagus moves swallowed food down to your stomach, a ring of muscles, the lower esophageal splinter or what we call less, connects the stomach and esophagus. When the less is weak, stomach acid can leak back into your esophagus and cause heartburn. This causes serious damage to your esophagus over time. About 20% of Americans suffer from GERD. You can treat GERD with lifestyle changes such as changing what and when you eat and eating smaller meals. Antiseeds or prescription strength acid blockers can also help. Um, in gastroesophageal reflux, this is a disease wherein the acid is uh, going up from the stomach to the esophagus and the people that can have a risk factors are people with obesity uh, pregnant and delayed stomach emptying factors that aggravate acid reflux are smoking eating heavy meals and etc Gastritis, uh, gastritis, uh, inflammation of the stomach lining. These two conditions have a similar symptoms, including stomach, stomach pain and nausea, and similar causes. A bacterial infection or Helicobacter pylori is the most common cause of food and often cause chron chronic gastritis, including aspirin, 
ibuprofen and naprofen naprozen are uh, another common causes a bacterial infection or helicobacter pylori is the most common cause of the food and often causes chronic gastritis including aspirin, imbuprofen, and nafrozen are the another common cause. Anta Antacid and proton pump inhibitor often help antibiotic treat and infection and helicobacter pylori infection. The main cause of this gastritis is a overtaking of drugs like Advil and others. Third one is uh, stomach flu. Stomach flu or gastroenteritis is an infection of the stomach and upper part of the small intestine. Common symptoms are diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pain, and the cramp. Ro rotavirus and norovirus, which affect millions of the people every year, are often the cause. Gastroenteritis often clear up on its own but you lose fluid through diarrhea and vomiting prevent dehydration by drinking water and electrolyte drinks stomach flu is also called uh, viral gastroenteritis in an uh, intestinal infection marked by watery and diarrhea abdominal cramps vomiting and uh, sometimes fever this disease happen through contact with uh, infected di ingesting contaminated food or water. Uh, good afternoon ma'am. This is the continuation of the common digestive diseases. We'll tackle, tackle the fourth one which is the constipation. Constipation is difficult or infrequent passage of stool. If you have bowel movements less than three times a week, you are likely constipated. Chronic constipation affects about 63 million people in the United States. A common cause of constipation is not getting enough fiber in your diet. <clears throat> the main symptoms of constipation is straining to go. In most cases, increasing fiber, fluids, and exercise will solve this condition. Use laxatives only as a temporary solution. So constipation is the irregular irregular passage of stool or yung madalas na pagkakaroon ng ano ng matigas na dumi ganun. So yun yung constipation. So para makaiwas tayo sa constipation, we are required to add some fiber, fluids and exercise in our regular diet. And the fifth one is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are painful swollen blood vessels in the anal canal. Symptoms include pain, itching, and bright red color after, after a bowel movement. Constipation and pregnancy are major causes. Hemorrhoids are common with 75% of people older than 45 having them. It helps avoid constipation by adding fiber and plenty of fluids to your diet. Try hemorrhoid cream. Suppositories are a warm bath to relieve pain and itchiness. <clears throat> It may feel a little embarrassing to talk about hemorrhoids, but don't let that stop you from seeking help if hemorrhoids persist. So hemorrhoids are like ano, almoranas. Yun yung hemorrhoids are caused by by constipation. So kapag ka sobrang tigas nung nilalabas natin na dumi sa katawan, so magkakaroon ng sugat dun sa ating anal canal so yon magkakaroon tayo ng hemorrhoids swollen blood vessels in the anal canal so the last one is the gallstone the gallbladder is an organ attached to your intestine that stores bile a digestive juice bile can form small hard deposits called gallstones about 20 million americans have gallstones but not all of them are a problem some gallstones don't cause symptoms and go away on their own. Others can cause severe pain or infection. You may also have nausea, vomiting, and fever. Surgery is the usual treatment for gallstone that causes these gallbladder attacks. So, gallstone, common sa atin na tawag is yung bato. 
So tinatawag natin yung nabato. Ito yung cost niya is yung sobra na pagkain ng mga maalat tapos yung <coughs> sobrang pa, yung nasosobran sa maalat tapos mga alak ganun acid. Sobrang pag-work ng kidney so magkakaroon siya ng ano ng gallbladder gal rather. So yun. So that's all our report about the di digestive system. Always remember that digestion is great secret of life. Thank you. I never made it, but I know